Hi, welcome to Geology. Today we are going to be talking about the idea of the layers of the earth. So we've gone through and we've talked about latitude and longitude and we've gone through and we've talked about the idea of landforms with topography maps. Now we're going to dive down into the earth's crust and see what's happening kind of below us and that's going to set the stage for a lot of things that we move through for the rest of the year. So I'm going to draw two different types of models here on the board for us and we'll kind of go through and discuss what that looks like and what are some of the features that are there to kind of help get us starting to think about the rock cycle and plate tectonics and how that has changed over millions and billions and trillions of years. So let's go ahead and get out a sheet of paper and I'd like for you today to label this layers of the earth. That's what I'm gonna do right here. Layers of the earth. And as you guys know, I am short, so that's gonna be just one of those things. Can you guys hopefully see that pretty well? So um, the idea is that we're going to draw two different layers here, and I'm going to draw them like a pizza pie. And we're going to pretend like we're going to be going down to the core of the earth. But there's two different ways that we can look at the earth's crust. So I'm going to start with a simpler model, which you probably already know, and then we'll move into a more detailed model. So the first model we're just going to call the physical model, and that's this one here. So the physical model. And with that, there are several different things that we're going to kind of be covering. The first is going to be, and I'm going to kind of switch different colors here as we move through. Um, I'm going to start with the surface, which is just called the crust. And hopefully by this point, you kind of already get the idea. The crust is a solid surface, so solid rock. We can stand on the crust. We don't fall down through or anything of that sort. The layer right below it is going to be the mantle. really squeaky markers here. And the mantle in our physical layer is an area where there is rock that is melted and some that is magma. And this is just brings up a good point to remember that magma is um, below the earth's surface. It's still lava, it just hasn't been erupted yet. So magma is below the earth's surface and then lava is once it reaches the earth's surface and gets exploded out into our environment. Um, so the mantle is like melty rock. It moves. And we'll talk about that. It moves. Um, then we jump into, and I'm going to go back to my green here, which is the outer core. And then our inner core. And I'm going to make the inner core red. I'm going to actually label it down here. So to give you an idea, those are our four different layers of um, our physical model. The outer core is also kind of a um, flowy type of environment. We'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute. I'm going to write inner core with purple because I don't feel like this is showing up for you. So these are the terms that I normally say are baby terms, the ones that you've probably heard of before um, in maybe another class, in maybe a geography class, or um, maybe back in middle school or elementary school. So these are terms that we are going to be using, but um, we're gonna make this a little bit more higher education. Um, so I really wanna focus in on the chemical layers because these are layers that we can really look at what is actually Actually happening and what are the chemical compositions that allow for each one of these layers to have different types of uh, features or um, distinctive properties with them. So I'm going to label this one over here. And bring my markers with me. This is going to be called our chemical layer. And our 
chemical layer, like I said, is a little bit more detailed. And so we're gonna talk about what that process kind of looks like with it. So first off, um, our uppermost region is called the lithosphere. And the lithosphere is solid rock, just kind of like the crust is. It's just that um, it's a much more thinner layer than what it would be on our physical. So the lithosphere is a thin, it can be thick in some spots, especially if we're talking about uh, continental plates, that's going to be super thick with um, our mountains and plateaus in larger regions. Whereas down by the Marianas Trench, where that is still the lithosphere, it's just that it's gonna be much thinner because we're getting closer to the next level, which is then going to be the the ascenosphere. I'm gonna draw that one in. I'm gonna use orange. The ascenosphere. And the ascenosphere is a, um, oops, I forgot to do something here. So, thick and thin layers. thick and thin layers of, of rock. Where the ascenosphere is going to be kind of a melt, melty type of environment. So this is kind of that idea of the mantle. Think of it as um, that you have all of this pressure that is being pushed down from the lithosphere on the ascenosphere, and it's causing those layers to kind of heat up ever so slightly because you're increasing pressure and temperature, and it does that. It allows the ascenosphere to flow every so often, and as it does that, it creates convection cells, and that's what I'm gonna write over here. That's kind of its important feature is that convection cells are present. Meaning that warm magma rises, cools, and sinks back down. Rises, cools, and sinks. And this is a really important process because it creates plate tectonics for the ascenosphere or the lithosphere. So the ascenosphere's movement with the convection cells cause plate tectonics for our lithosphere. So it warms up, cools, sinks back down. And as it does that, it sometimes drags some of the plates with it. Then below that, we have what is called the, our mesosphere. And this is solid rock again. Due to the pressure and temperature change from what's happening in the lithosphere, pushing down on the ascenosphere, and then the ascenosphere pushing down on the mesosphere, we then, I forgot me, we then get solid rock again. So that mesosphere is a solid rock type layer. And then we have our two cores. Once again, we have our outer core. And then we have our inner core. And so maybe you're starting to see a pattern here. We have the lithosphere, which is solid rock. The ascenosphere, which is partially melted rock due to convection cells, so I should say melty rocks. Then you have the mesosphere, which is solid. We have alternating layers. So our outer core is actually convection cells again. So convection. and magma. And this is really an important feature that's happening here. That convection that is happening in the outer core is creating something really strong for the earth to be stable, which is our um, magnetic um, our magnetic field. And so what happens is that if you think about it, probably as a young child, you probably have heard that the inner core is made up of mostly like iron and nickel and really heavy elements. There's been differentiation between the rock layers is that our, our lighter elements are up here at the top and the heavier elements sunk down. And that is the case with our outer and inner cores at the heavier elements. There is a lot of iron that is in the outer core and as it is being convected, it creates the magnetic field, which is really important. 
And then our inner core is once again solid. And it is mostly made of iron and nickel. And I'm mostly just gonna put iron, but there's nickel and other types of heavier elements there. So these are our two different types of, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it a little better. These are our two different types of, wow, you would think I'd be better at that, layers. So we have our physical layer with our crust, mantle, core, outer, and inner core. And then we have our chemical layers with the lithosphere, asthenosphere, mesosphere, outer, inner core. Hopefully this was helpful. We're gonna kind of dive into and start talking about different types of the features and what we can kind of see at each one of these.